Hello and welcome. Uh, this is just a quick video today. Uh, it's the middle of summer in the UK, so it means that we have torrential rain. It's been raining now non-stop for about six days, seven days. Everywhere is absolutely soaking wet and it means that getting out with the radio has been rather difficult. Uh, especially I'm really busy as well and the spare time that I, d I have had it's been too busy, it's been too wet to get outdoors. However, I was, I'm getting cabin fever, so I've decided just to come out during my lunch break um, at work. Today I'm just going to play around a little bit more with the APRS. I am currently using uh, the uh, mag mount antenna on the car. Uh, I've got the, uh, the Bofang and also the TNC3. Uh, I'll get a, bit, a better video of all this in a minute, uh, but I'm using a Android tablet uh, on my lap with a little foldable keyboard. So I'm just going to uh, play a little bit of APRS on there, uh, maybe put out a few calls on 2 meters as well. So one of the things that I'm quite interested in is um, how amateur radio can be used in emergency um, communications. There's, there, there is still a need for uh, RF, for, you know, for radio communications, especially in the times of um, natural disasters, floods and extreme weather conditions. Yeah, maybe not so much in the Western world, but uh, you know, there, there are still many places around the world that rely on uh, radio at times of disaster. And I've been quite interested in the use of Winlink and APRS uh, for um, emergency emergency comms. So it's a quite a fascinating subject to read around. There, there's a piece of software that I've been working on uh, during my my day my day job with a client, and we've been working on a piece of software that enables uh, clinicians and patients. Doctors and patients, nurses and patients, to communicate using the text messaging, but also chatbots and lots of new ways of communicating um, between the uh, you know person to person. But I've also uh, been looking at using APRS to connect to this system, so that, for example, you could be uh, in a village somewhere that's uh, cut off through an extreme weather. Um, uh, event but using radio uh, either you can you still use Winlink but you could also have a semi-automated system as well that would send uh, an APRS packet uh, to a, uh, to the nearest um, SMS gateway which might be a few miles away where the uh, the, um, the there is still some connectivity bridging that gap between the village and a, and a gateway. So I've been looking at, uh, at bringing together a piece of software that by sending in certain keywords, uh, or keywords with uh, a scale, so battery, five hours, battery, 10 hours, food, one day, food, two days. Th this could be an indicator of uh, how much supplies um, a, a person or group of people have. And that could be sent from APRS into an SMS system, and then that's rerouted to a piece of software that actually that responds to that in numerous different ways. You know, you can the software itself can have within, built within it many logical uh, responses. So, um, so today was just a chance to get out and test out the. Um, this this APRS uh, to SMS gateway and then connecting that to the software that we're developing depending on the type of message the type of text that's in that message the uh, the software can respond to that um, Edith difficult to type Edith red percent uh, hopefully the Bofang will send that. It might, there we go. It just sent. It just sent that, and there we go. It just responded back. Um, thanks. That's red. Um, it's a difference in colour. Uh, green means that actually my message has gone out and hit the eye gate, and I've got an acknowledgement back. 
um, and then when they get a reply, it comes back in blue. Uh, so it's actually been sent, been picked up, um, but the returning message uh, hasn't fully made it. So that's most likely that I'm using a small antenna on the car um, and that um, my connection with the eye gate lo locally isn't um, isn't that uh, strong so um, I'm probably missing out on lots of messages coming back so that was just a, a, a just a little experiment with that and it's the same with the uh, weather bot I've sent in a few connections now to uh, the weather bot CWOP um, send um, <clears throat> But I'm not getting back um, anything on the... Um, so I, I perhaps need to improve the um, <clears throat> the reception here. It might be that I'm actually... I'm, I'm, it might be that I'm getting out to the uh, eye gate, but I'm not actually getting the acknowledgement back because I'm not receiving the signal strong enough. Um, so that that's that's something to um test out again maybe um with a you know a better setup i i'm quite enjoying i'm quite enjoying using the <clears throat> uh, the the tablet with the um foldable keyboard it's a much better screen to work with uh, obviously in a cramped condition like this trying to operate with the keyboard on your knee isn't so good you can get um, tables that sit and cl click over your steering wheel I mean that'd be quite that'd be quite um, useful this is two echo zero echo Zulu Tango mobile Calling CQ, CQ, two echo zero echo Zulu Tango, calling CQ. Two echo zero, calling CQ, go ahead. Yeah, good, uh, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, the name is Carl. Shall we try four five zero? Right, okay, well, that concludes this very short video. I feel a lot better for it, thank you very much. I've managed to get outdoors. I've not managed to have a walk around. Everywhere is very muddy. I've not got my uh, play clothes on today, so I can't go out and play in the mud. But just getting outdoors, playing a bit of radio, somewhere different, can make a big difference anyway. So... Thank you for watching and I uh, look forward to the next video and uh, see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.